ignited. But in general, if you look at the the size of um, the, the way that the team needs to be rebuilt. I mean, uh, it's not enough to bring in three or four new players. It will be more, bearing in mind how many players uh, will no longer be here with the contracts running out. Uh, it's important to know at one stage who is the new manager. Ralph Radnick, a man who you know very, full well. I was very excited when he came in as our interim manager, not simply because, in fact, not because of the football. That was an added little bonus, the idea that we might do this gag and pressing system, which hasn't worked with this set of players. Lo and behold, who could have predicted that? But Ralph Radnick, he is a man who I want United to be listening to. I've done tons of videos on this, and I will continue to push this conversation because I think it's so significant and so important that I do it, and hopefully... I mean, I'm not going to affect it that much. I'm not going to influence whether it happens or not, but I want Manchester United fans to remember how important Ralph Ragnick could become at Manchester United if he's consulted properly. And this revolutionary, it's not revolutionary plan. It is a revolution for Manchester United, but it's not revolutionary. He went as far as to say it wasn't rocket science. I'm going to run through it in this video. So make sure you stick around, run through all the things that he said in the latest interview, because I tell you what, if we don't listen to him, we deserve the wilderness that we are heading towards. I completely mean that. Make sure you do head down there. Uh, if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, hit the subscribe button if you're new to United People's TV and hit the notification bell. You get a ping every time I go live with a video. But let me run through this latest interview with Ralph Radnick on Sky Sports. Make sure you follow the link in the description uh, to read the full Q&A with Melissa Reddy. Um, but I've done it here. And I've run, I want to run through all the points that he says bit by bit. The first thing he says is this. It, maybe not the first thing in order, but these are the points I want to run through that I think are so so crucial for us to get right, really. He's saying, in Germany, we have a head coach. And then there is usually a minimum of two skilled people continuously in the club on a longer term basis, responsible for recruitment, scouting, and any daily operation. They also bring in the right and best possible head coach for the team. This still hasn't got a big tradition. And so one of a sporting director, so the job of a sporting director or director of football, only a few clubs in England have that. I know for the future, and I think that even more so for a big club like Man United, you can't put all those jobs and tasks on the responsibility, and the whole responsibility, sorry, on the only on the shoulder of one person, on the manager. I'm not sure if this can be dealt with by one person, no matter how good he is. I know Liverpool, City and Chelsea also have smart people who take care of recruitment, scouting the medical department. I think this is also an issue for our club where they have to pay attention to. Let me hit that button. Just listen to him, please. Manchester United. Seriously. As I said, it feels like I'm starting to bang my head against it. Maybe we are listening to him. But the, uh, maybe six days is enough. If he's going to be consulted properly and these are the these are the, the overall philosophies that, philosophy, sorry, that he is pushing towards, then maybe it can happen. But if you take a look at our club and you can see where Ralph Radnick currently is. He's over here, right? He's over there. You've got John, John Murto as a football director with Darren Fletcher just underneath as a technical director, of course, below Joel Glazer and Richard Arnold. What we need is Ralph to effectively move there. We need Ralph to sit alongside John Murto, consulting him, directing him. Darren Fletcher, I've got no idea what he does really down there in a technical director role. And if we're talking about He's saying about um, there's two or three people continuously who are there and they have the long-term vision of the club in hand. This is where I think we also need a bit of change. You've got Matt Judge, who's been forced down there as the director of football negotiations. Of course, Matt Judge was Ed Woodward's crony, his right-hand man. And Steve Brown down there is head of recruitment. And we've balls up on recruitment so often. It's why I've shouted Paul Mitchell's name so much. And I will probably continue to shout Paul Mitchell's name so much. I'm not specifically focusing on Eric Ten Hag and the idea that he comes in and it all gets resolved because it won't happen. Ten Hag will fail. Ten Hag will be sacked unless this is resolved, unless this structure changes properly. And it's exactly what Radnick is going on about in this interview. It can't all lie on the shoulder of one person anymore. The Fergie style doesn't work. And that's what's taken United so long. We had Fergie. City, when they got all their oil money and they invested, they hadn't had a Fergie before. They just looked at what worked elsewhere and took that. 
And that's why it's worked for them. That's why they're a modern club right now. And Liverpool, they've had their, their long, long sustained period and they saw what the City have done and doing and they did the same thing, eh? It's not rocket science. It isn't rocket science. But listen to him, please. For the love of God, listen to what Ralph Rannick is having to say. And as I said, the more you... Ralph almost speaks like a like a United fan, man. Like He just says the things. It's because we've been saying all the correct things for a long time. It's just nothing has happened. And that's what makes me so passionate, really, about listening to what Ralph has to say. Because he's somebody who can genuinely have influence on the club. And with this platform, I want to push this concept onto fans and make sure that you all remember where the focus needs to be. And it's on the overall structure. Um, he went into a bit more detail here and he was asked, you spoke there about being ahead in games, but not having the stability to see it out. Is that psychological? What would you put that down to? He said, yeah, it's got to do with our confidence for sure, but it also has to do with finding the best possible balance offensively and defensively. We have a lot of offensive players who should normally play, but at the same time, we don't have the same number of defensive midfield players. Brandon McTominay missing. We don't have many other defensive midfielders and that has been a problem in the past and that's why we didn't see out those games after being one or two up <laughs> again. Saying all the right things. And this is, the, as I said, Randick's been speaking to the board. We can, you can be pissed off at the fact that, ah, oh, look at all the points we haven't won under Radnick. The football hasn't improved. On a points by points and a goals per game basis, we're conceding less and we're getting more points per game. So we have technically improved. That's only really because we were so bad uh, towards the end on an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but it just, I think I'm just pretending, I'm not angry now, but I'm fearing the fact that we've got this man in front of us in Ralph Rannick, who in my opinion can be a catalyst for change behind the scenes. And I just fear that he will not be truly listened to. And it's not just because he can, he says the right things. He, he's backed it all up before. If we take a look down here, this is what else he said when he was asked about, about Liverpool. How can you find the physicality against Liverpool? It's just, listen to what he, he says and how he says it. That with Liverpool, it's clear why they are playing and as aggressive as they do. It's since Jürgen arrived. If you compare the squad that he inherited six years ago, there's only four or five players that are still there. All the others that have signed since have been signed exactly under those premises. How do we want to play? They have to be able and willing to run and sprint a lot. Physical, have to be technical, clinical. The profile for each position has been clear. And at, here at Manchester United, this hasn't been the case with every change of manager. Another round of applause. A new players came in, but it was not under the precondition of how do we want to play. And this is for sure something that needs to be changed in the future. It does. That's why the vision is so necessary. That's why we need to make sure there's continuity between managers. And that's a big word, a big, big word, isn't it? It's an average word that I've used quite a lot of times. And so just, I feel so strongly about it because I can see it there. I can see it right there in front of us, what we need to do, what we've done wrong. And Ralph Rennick, as I said, look, is, we're not exactly talking about a man who's got no experience. He knows how to look at structures of clubs and to implement and improve them. Him there with Hoffenheim's owner as they went from a, that's an average amateur village team into a Bundesliga regular. RB Leipzig, 10 years, four promotions and one goal. And who was a man who was absolutely at the core of making that happen? Ralph Rannick, the man who managed them and coached them out of the, sec the second division in, the Bund in the Germany, in the Bundesliga 2, and then moved upstairs into the actual overall running of the club and the overall running of the brand itself. Ralph Rannick, and look, I'm so excited about Eric Ten Hag. I'm so excited because, because of what we're going back to there. Reiterate those words there. You have to be, how do we play? All those players have been signed under the premise of how do we play? We know how Manchester United are now going to play under Eric Ten Hag. If you've watched Ajax, it does have that intensity. You watched the game between Ajax and PSV at the weekend. You saw that cup final. It was crazy. Tackles flying in left, right and centre. An absolutely boisterous tempo. Boisterous tempo? I ran away to describe it. That's exactly what it was. And we've missed that for so long, but we've just not had the players for that either. As Ralph is explaining, and this is why that consultancy role needs to be done. I'm not saying that he could be the sort of, the complete angel that maybe we thought he could be. I still stand by the fact that he probably could be. But all jokes aside, we're sitting here right now the position of our club 
It's been nine years since we won the Premier League title. Eight, nine years since we won the Premier League title come the end of the season. And we've got the right manager coming in. We're going to have an identity. By the end of next season, you can confidently look at that Manchester United team and go, you know what? I can see what Eric Ten Hag is working towards. Week in, week out, increment, incremental improvements. It might not, it won't work straight away. These players, tons of injuries are going to come next year. There's going to be struggles. Where will we play European football? Who knows? Who cares next year? It's not the it's not the measure of success. But we need the right players to make that happen. We need the right recruitment to make that happen. In my opinion, we need the right structure behind Eric Ten Hag to allow that to happen. And if we don't have that, we're going to find ourselves in a position in a couple of years' time to say, what if? And Ten Hag will probably just pop off to City and get it done perfectly. We're in a position to do it right. Do it right, man. Listen to Ralph Ragnick. Please, for the love of God, United, consult him properly. John Murto is a man inside this position here. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He's learning on the job. Let Ralph move sideways, move alongside him. If we're not going to get someone like Paul Mitchell in the way, you know what I think about Paul Mitchell and how much of a difference I think he can make. But... You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. As I said, make sure you uh, follow the link in the description if you want to read the full Q&A from Ralph Rennick. But I love listening to him speak. He's a man who's very intelligent and can articulate complex issues, I suppose, very easily for people to understand. That should help Manchester United's board. Let him be the man that behind the scenes says the sort of things that allows Ten Hag to do his job properly. He won't have the Overmars and the Van der Sar working partnership at United. Of course he won't. He's going to have to get used to this new one. He'll be working probably with John Murto, Darren Fletcher, maybe, and Ralph Radnick. Let Ralph do that job, man. And maybe just bring Paul Mitchell into work in and replace, get rid of Steve Brown and Matt Judge. Allow someone like Paul Mitchell to take control of that. Hell, man. You might see Manchester United win the Premier League again. Without doing these sorts of changes, full changes around the entire club, we will just get stuck in the mud and we will go to the pattern that he's repeated, that Randick said repeated there because you haven't signed players to play a certain way. Van Hal plays very different to Moyes, to Mourinho, to Solskjaer. And that's why we've got such a clusterfuck of a squad. Let someone like Radnick steer the conversation and allow the decisions to be made correctly. And I will keep banging this drum, hopefully until there's some sort of clarity on that role. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am, but you can let me know what you think in the comments below. As I said, feel pretty passionately on this and feel pretty passionate the idea that Ralph Rannick really can be a man that brings the sort of changes behind the scenes that we need for Eric Ten Hag to succeed.